Citizens Redistricting Commission uh, from the Secretary of State's office that is will be uh, replicate what is already uh, in place in uh, Ohio and other states to actually engage and involve all citizens, Republicans and Democrats, independents, unaffiliated, uh, in the redistricting process because it's a crucial, uh, it's complicated as a, as, a law, as a law professor and as a teacher I, uh, I have had the opportunity to teach redistricting law to many students throughout the years and I, I, I know that it's, it's complex but at the same time it's crucial uh, to ensuring that people understand it and have a voice in the process and feel that they own or have ownership over the redistricting process and so I'm excited and enthused that with the Secretary of State's office we can have a voice for fair redistricting and nonpartisan redistricting and sort of in line with the commission that Mark talked about. Uh, but to give you a bit about my background, uh, my parents were special education teachers and so my approach to recognizing that we all need to have a voice in the political process comes from their work to ensure that their students had a voice in the educational institutions that they were a part of. And from there, uh, I, I was raised in Pittsburgh, went to Wellesley College where I worked uh, to create opportunities for women to get involved in politics and in fact ran myself and was elected on the local level there before uh, up and moving to Montgomery, Alabama to work for the Southern Poverty Law Center, uh, where I worked in the 90s to investigate hate groups and hate crimes in the Deep South and uh, really was instilled with this recognition of the sacrifice that has been made uh, throughout our country's history so that we could all have a right to vote that was preserved for everyone and that that one person one vote promise in our Constitution is a reality. So I became an attorney because I wanted to enforce the Voting Rights Act in part out of a recognition that through fair districting can come fair uh, and full and accountable representation uh, and also from the Voting Rights Act we can enforce this right to vote that's preserved in our Constitution. But after the 2000 election, I think many of us saw for the first time how despite what the law may say or may not say, you need a Secretary of State as well who's going to be beholden to the law to ensure that every vote counts and every vote is counted. Uh, and so in 2004, I was asked by the Democratic National Committee to set up a voter protection effort. And the idea was, was that we would place volunteers in precincts throughout the country, many of you may have volunteered here in Michigan, uh, to protect the vote, to use election law to ensure that no eligible voter was wrongfully turned away from the polls. And what happened that year is we deployed 17,000 people to protect the vote and we still couldn't overcome the decisions that were made by a Secretary of State in Ohio to only accept certain voter registration forms or not put enough voting machines in Democratic areas leading to eight-hour lines. And we saw again how the process and the rules of the game can sometimes be at risk at being manipulated or affected in such a way that will, will hurt the democratic process. But here in Michigan, we're not Florida, we're not Ohio, we actually have a history of running elections very well. And when Richard Austin was our Secretary of State, he led the way for motor voter, the idea that you can register to vote when you get your driver's license. So that's our legacy in Michigan. We've been historically a state that people have looked to for ideas on how to run accessible uh, elections and uh, in which the democratic process is protected and guarded. But I believe uh, we've started slipping behind while uh, 30 other states have no reason absentee voting or early voting uh, or other things to protect access to the vote while also protecting the integrity of the process. Uh, we don't have those things here in Michigan. Uh, and we don't allow our citizens to vote on a Saturday or Sunday or Monday like they're able to do in other states. And I think on a basic equality scale, we need to ensure that our citizens have the same opportunities that citizens in neighboring states share uh, and have. In able to ensure their vote is protected. Uh, but apart from redistricting and apart from the, the voting aspect, this, the, the beauty of the Secretary of State's position is how much beyond that it can be used to do to actually affect efficient government for our citizens. And we have a plan uh, to ensure that our branch office services are improved, that our driver's licensing process is updated and modernized and enhanced, and that our campaign finance system is structured and enforced in a way to ensure that our elections remain in the hands of the people. On the branch office side, we're going to do a top to bottom review of the branch office closures in recent years to ensure that we're doing everything we can to restore, where possible, state services to citizens who've lost those access, that access in recent years through partnering with other state agencies, local governments, or maybe even local businesses to deliver state services. This week we're going to announce a new initiative that we call Plan Ahead and Skip the Wait, where you'll actually be able to go online or call a hotline and
can reserve a spot at the Secretary of State's office in your area. You can look on, click on the date, click on the time, and if it's available, you can reserve that spot for you to take care of your business with the state so that you don't have to wait in line if you know ahead of time when you're going to go to the branch office. We're also going to explore enabling uh, text messaging so that if you do wait in line, you can get a text message when your name's about to be called. That'll enable you to visit neighboring businesses and other things while you're waiting to, to have your business done at the Secretary of State's office. We also want to have it so that you can post job opportunities in the branch offices, or if you want to start a business, you can get the paperwork on how to do that at your local branch office. It's all a part of re-envisioning state services and branch offices to be uh, more user-friendly and more customer-friendly for all our citizens in this state. In, in connection with that, we want to offer multi-year license plates so that we're not requiring citizens to renew every year. If you want to renew for three or five years at a time, we want to pr provide you with that opportunity. And so that will also make, again, dealing with the government easier and will enable us to perhaps uh, create monthly payment plans for citizens who are, perhaps lost their job and can't make that yearly fee. We still want to ensure that they're able to drive and we want to work with them to do that. Uh, we also want to eliminate the stickers, the tabs, that you have to print and, and, and stick on your license plates every year. I mean, come on, it's 2010. Should we rather be putting stickers on our license plates? What we want to have are barcodes on license plates so that we can they can be scanned automatically and updated free of charge from our offices and uh, with, with no additional cost to you. So those are ways in which the Secretary of State's office can work for all citizens to mo be modernized, enhance, and enable citizens to believe more or look more to their government as an efficient way of operating and delivering state services. But finally, some of you may have heard uh, this, that the U.S. Supreme Court released an opinion several months ago called Citizens United, saying that corporations now have a right uh, yes. to have uh, to participate and even influence our political process. Mm -hmm. And it's been frustrating to sort of see uh, this new era of campaign finance law develop. Uh, and what I've seen in uh, in that development is the uh, is is the vast number of things that could happen as a result of this new. Uh, decision and interpretation of the Constitution. One being that without additional regulations, foreign corporations may be able to literally buy ads and attempt to influence our American political democracy. Uh, corporations that do business with the state may be able to uh, buy ads or influence who is making the decisions over the very government contracts that they are hoping to uh, have a part of. Uh, and even more, or perhaps even um, in addition to all of these things, uh, what really is uh, scary for me is to think of the potential that corporations can influence our process and we may not even know about it. And what I mean by that are recent decisions indicate that corporations may be able to influence our political process without having to disclose that they're even paying for the ads that they're paying for. And I know many of us have received calls from robocalls and all that sorts of things. And wouldn't it be nice to know, especially if corporations are paying for them, who is paying for those robocalls? Who's behind those political ads? And in my view, democracy requires that we know uh, who's uh, paying to influence the political decisions that we as voters are making. And so as Secretary of State, I'm going to work uh, in incessantly to ensure that our democracy remains in the hands of our people and that we're doing everything we can to promote disclosure, transparency, and accountability uh, in an era where corporations may be able to play a larger role in the political process because the most important thing is that the voice of the people are heard and are, are, are the ones that are ultimately determining who wins or who loses elections. And without a Secretary of State who's going to fight for that equality, fight for that disclosure and transparency, uh, we may see this new era of campaign finance law fall literally into the hands of corporations and big, big business and special interests uh, who would at the very least lead to an imbalance of who's making decisions uh, in Lansing uh, and in Washington. So I need your help to ensure that we get all these great ideas for state services in, in, our, in our branch offices, this up, updating and modernizing our licensing, but also ensuring that our democracy remains in the hands of our people. Uh, so that's what's at stake in this election. And, and when you hear about the Secretary of State's office, know that it's a crucial piece of this entire process of ensuring that we have fair redistricting, because I will, as I mentioned, be that voice for fair redistricting uh, when elected. But in addition to that, be a voice and advocate for all of these other changes and, and enhancements to our Secretary of State's office. And I believe when we win in November that we will be able to create a Secretary of State's office that is a model 
for Secretary of State's offices in other states. Uh, and that's truly who we are in Michigan. We are a model for other states, and we must reclaim that mantle, reclaim that, that vision and that visionary leadership uh, that we've had.